4.6, Applying the Exponent Laws. We're going to take what we learned from the exponent laws and use that to simplify some exponential equations. Let's get started. So here I've got 0 0.4 to the negative 2 power and 0 0.5 to the power of 5. I'm going to show you two different ways to go about solving this same expression. So first of all, I've got the same base on both. I've got 0 0.4 and I've got 0 0.4. Don't worry about the fact that it's a decimal. This is the same base on both. This one I'm going to start off by using a product of powers. If I have a product of powers, all I do is I add those two exponents. I'm going to use my rule for dealing with integers to deal with that negative exponent. Minus 2 plus 5 gives me plus 3. My simplified exponential expression, written as a single power, 0 0.4 to the power of 3. I also want to bring it to your attention. We didn't ask you to evaluate this question, just to simplify it and rewrite it. Let's look at method number two. In this case, we're going to deal with that negative exponent first. We're going to take the reciprocal of the base where we have the negative exponent. Just remember your rules for dealing with negative exponents. So let's rewrite that. On the bottom, I'm going to put that 0 0.4, and instead of to the negative 2 power, it's going to become squared. And the top doesn't change. Now we can solve this using a quotient of powers. My base is the same, that's 0 0.4. The exponent on my numerator is 5. The exponent on my denominator is 2, so I'm going to subtract that 2. 5 minus 2 gives me 3, so my rewritten term is going to be 0 0.4 to the power of 3. Exact same answer we got before, we just got there using a different method. Either will work. Here let's move on to the next example. x to the power of negative 3, all of that's going to be taken to the power of negative 5, and it's all going to be divided by x to the power of 5. We've got all the same bases here, so that's fairly straightforward. We're going to do this in a couple of steps. Let's start with dealing with that numerator. x to the power of negative 3, all to the power of negative 5. Rule we're looking for here is power of a power. In the case of a power of a power, you take those exponents and you multiply them together. So I'm going to rewrite the bottom because that doesn't change. I've got x to the power of 5, and on top I've got x, and I'm going to multiply the minus 3 and the 5. So that becomes x to the power of 5 on the bottom. Minus 3 times 5 gives me x to the power of negative 15 on top. Next I can use the quotient of powers rule. In that case, I've got the same base. I'm going to subtract those two exponents. My base is x. Minus 15 minus 5 gives me x to the minus 20. Now we don't want to leave it as a negative exponent. We're going to correct that. We're going to turn it into a positive exponent. We're just going to use our methods for dealing with negative exponents. I'm going to take the reciprocal of that x and rewrite the power as a positive. It becomes 1 over x to the power of 20. Solving questions like this becomes as simple as breaking it down piece by piece. Use one rule at a time. Deal with one part at a time. And don't be afraid of taking multiple steps. Okay, this one's got quite a bit going on. Got multiple brackets, I've got dividing, I've got power of a power. I'll be honest, this is an awkward way of writing this question. Very rarely do we use that particular dividing symbol. However, the other way of writing this is also quite awkward. Let me show you quickly. So there's the other way of writing it. I personally find trying to write a fraction over top of a fraction, it gets to be a bit much. This is one of the few cases you'll catch me using that other dividing symbol. Let's get rid of that. All right, so when I start looking at this, if I follow my Bedmas rules, which normally are a good idea, if I look at this one, if I start squaring the round brackets on the first one and taking the round brackets on the second one to the power of four. The problem with that is I'm going to start changing my bases. Right now, I've got the exact same base of a negative four fifths, and I don't really want to mess with that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to deal with that power of a power, and I'm also going to deal with that power of a power right there. I'm going to try and keep those bases the same for as long as possible. Let's do that first one. Let's do that first one. My base doesn't change. When I do power of a power, I multiply those two exponents. I've got 2 times minus 3. We'll come back to that second one in a minute. Let's just finish this first one off. Base stays the same, and 2 times minus 3 gives me a minus 6. Let's go back to the other side. Still have that 4 fifths base, although in this case, my exponents are 4 times 5. Base stays the same. 4 times 5 gives me 20. From here, I'm going to use my quotient of powers rule. 
Quotient of powers rule states, if you're dividing two exponential expressions with the same base, you can subtract the exponents. Well, my base stays the same, negative 4 fifths. I'm going to take minus 6 and I'm going to subtract 20 from that. That equals minus 4 fifths. Still haven't changed that base. Minus 6 and minus 20 gives me minus 26. And last but not least, we don't want to leave a negative exponent, so I'm going to rewrite it with a positive exponent. To deal with that negative exponent, I take the reciprocal of the base, which in this case is now going to be negative 5 over 4, and rewrite it with a positive. Negative 5 quarters to the power of 26.